The process heats up with 30 visits where the Kansas City Chiefs bring in prospects to their house to check them out if they want to make them a permanent member. That's what we're getting to today on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, friends and neighbors. We are brought to you by Game Time. Download the app right now. Create an account and use our code Locked On NFL, and you're going to get twenty dollars off of your first purchase of last minute tickets. A great show for you. Things are starting to get very personal, very heated up as we go through the process. He's Chris Clark of Chiefs Corner. I'm Ryan Tracy from Rogue Analytics, as well as a number of other sites. The draft guide is out. Go get it at rogueapc.com and use my code LOC. You'll get a discount on the draft guide right now so you can understand all these prospects and how they fit in. We've got rankings. We've got production. We've got athleticism all in one document. Go check it out at rogueapc.com. Follow up on NFL 33 and RGR football and see everything that Chris is doing at Chiefs Corner for all your cap and quarterback knowledge and everything that you need going into this. You can get that much more. And now doing mock drafts. Oh, rock and roll. You can get that much more in the box. Yeah. There's a whole lot of scenarios to go through. And you can get a little bit extra in the insider text line for you locos that listen every single day. We appreciate you. You can get it there at 816-357-8781. Join us here on YouTube where you can like. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell so you get notified. And go over to Spotify and Apple Music. Get connected on the audio platforms as well because we're free and available five days a week plus all year round for your Chiefs needs. The Chiefs have needs too couple of them showed up in Kansas City or are going to here in the very near future. What's going to happen with the wider future, or wide receiver future? That's coming up later in the show. And the running back position is a meh, touchy subject in Kansas City. Let's put it that way. <laughs> we'll get to that here in a little bit as well. But we got to start with the big men. And a, a visit that's coming in Kansas City that Chris Jones and Charles and many who kind of like foretold uh, voiced their opinion, say to, so to speak, to uh, the administration. Uh, one Texas gargantuan man, bigger maybe than all of Texas, is Tavondre Sweat, uh, a guy that's coming into Kansas City and has had, unfortunately, a DUI here recently in the run-up to the draft. There's a lot of scenarios that you have to talk about a prospect like this. He isn't expected to be the first defensive tackle taken off of his college team because that's probably going to be Byron Murphy, uh, who projects a little bit more. He is a massive, massive man, so much so that there are some questions about just how massive. Get a chance to ask him directly, see him in person, and get a feel for him. That's really what the 30 visits are for. Do you like him coming into Kansas City? I think it says a lot about their intentions. Uh, I think they, they, they look at it and look at what they did this year. I mean, they brought back their entire defensive line. They Everybody. I mean, Dana's back. I mean, you have the entire crew back at this point, and now you're bringing in a guy like Devondre Sweat. Uh, and it's interesting also because you have to wonder if, you know, they don't lose their defensive tackle from last year if they're even bringing him in this year. So, I mean, that's, you know, and I think he's in Tennessee right now. But regardless, uh, you're sitting here in a situation where uh, this is a player that could step in and most likely I wouldn't imagine be a starter year one. Uh, unless it's late in the season uh, and he's able to come on more than I would expect. But uh, he can give you a lot of size if he can get after the quarterback and help Chris Jones out. That's going to be something that's going to be a benefit to this entire Chiefs defensive line. Size, you you nailed it with that word because that's one of the big questions here. There are a lot of questions that 30 visit is going to handle. He could be there anywhere from a couple of hours to an entire day. You run them through drills. You put them on the board. You talk philosophy. You check them out medically. You can do a number of things here in these 30 I, visits because. You have a conversation with him about what just happened to him too. Absolutely. That's, that's the big You're one. investigating this person. And, yep. and it doesn't matter. It, it happens to be to said in this conversation. But anytime there's a 30 visit, that's the way it goes down. The big questions here are, as you said, size. Played at 360. Uh, we, we heard upwards of 390 towards the end of the season, which is a little bit interesting. And then refused to get weighed during the offseason process. At the Combine, at Pro Day, we don't have a current weight on him. That's the first thing he's going to do is step on the scale in Kansas City because they got to know, can you manage yourself? Are you going to get to the pros and, and not be able to make sure that you stay at a fighting weight? And that could be part of the reason that they're having him in. I mean, yeah. if they're interested in him, in him as a prospect, 
as a prospect, that could be the reason that they're having him in is to know what he weighs, to know if he can get to a point where he's going to do what needs to be done. Because the reality is, is that you can get all the talent, you can get players that have all the talent in the world. If they're not willing to take care of their bodies and they're not willing to put the effort into to be able to do just that minimum, it's not going to matter how talented they are. They're going to fall off and they're not going to be as successful as they possibly could be. And when you're looking at a situation like what Kansas City's in right now, where they're fighting for a three-peat in the Super Bowl, you don't want somebody to come in that's not going to be able to contribute at all if you're going to spend a first, well, probably a second round pick on him at this point. I'm not sure that they yet they have to any longer. I think this is drifting. Well, and that's in. possible too. I, I'm just looking at, at what we've been seeing recently. He's been, you know, high third round, and the Chiefs aren't going to be picky till 95. Maybe right. he's going to be available then, but we'll see. And that is partially due to the questions here about weight, about control. He played well at a, at a very heavy weight. Uh, he looked good at the combine. He moved well. So you can see that there's athleticism there to, despite what might be um, some kind of like concern him over the top end number. But there's also concern about off the field because this is this is your livelihood. This is you trying to make your way as a professional and to allow yourself not to have any, as far as I know, no run-ins with the law of any kind in Austin. And now just before the pre-draft process, you pull a DUI. It, not not the brightest move. Let's be real. The Chiefs have had similar situations to the past, and they've generally been able to work through it, and they generally are an understanding bunch. Let's be real. Uh, but the last time that a player of this caliber that was thought to be a fringe, maybe first-day guy, certainly a round-two guy that had something like this hit his particular pre-draft process, it dropped him down quite a bit, and the Chiefs took him and made the most of it. That guy ended up being Justin Houston. So there's a precedent for this team investigating and trying to understand the, the, the totality, the 360 view of a person to understand why this is happening. I can't say that's what's going on now. It's just one of many questions. But it certainly is a fit that if you can get him in the third round, this would be a bolster to the entire defensive front. And it fits him yeah. because he's not he's not a 60-snap at game guy. He's, he's going to play 30 snaps, and that's about all he's going to give you. And that's pretty much – Having to be in a rotation, that's exactly what the Kansas City Chiefs have. Well, and maybe he has to be in a rotation, and, and I don't disagree with you on that, but I think the, the key factor there is can he be in a rotation and give you something other than what Derek Nottie can give you on passing downs because that's what's going to be really be important. Nottie can do can step in and be the run stuffer and you know stop in goal line, stop in the tush-push type thing. Having sweat, I, th I think, would help as well, but you're in a situation where – you need somebody that can get after the passer and you need somebody that's going to, and maybe, maybe it's as simple as not even really getting after the passer near as much as it is just being that guy that's going to command a double team in the middle of the defense on third down that frees up other people. Maybe it's His, not about him actually getting pressure. Sorry. I, I mean, that's yes. just, no, you're absolutely right. His mere presence demands a double team. It yep. frees Chris Jones up. And that's, I, I think that's exactly what, and if, again, you're getting good value or you're not taking the risk on on a, a 64 or a 32 pick, it changes the math dramatically. Now, that's what happens. That's why you bring people in for visits. So, you dig in. So if he's there and they take him at 64, how are you going to feel about it? I'm going to think it's a risk. I'm going to be quite honest. I because you don't risk at 95. But... Absolutely. But but that's a, it's a weatherable one, in my opinion. So... That's what you do the 30 visits for to get the information to try to make as, as educated a decision as you can. He's not the only one. There's another player from a, a very similar uh, area, <laughs> the same town, coming in <laughs> at a different similar. position. What does the running back spot look like? We're going to get to that coming up here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? I'll tell you, I actually had an extra hour in my day. I took a nap. <laughs> uh, I needed some extra rest. It's been a long and stressful couple of months. Uh, and I took a nap and then I did some reading, went to the gym, uh, had a good time doing that. A lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash locked on. BetterHelp.com slash locked on. And there's a lot going on on the Locked On Podcast Network. We even have a mock draft live on April 17th at 7 Eastern, uh, going to be 6 Central, on the Locked On Sports Today feed. That's 24-7 here on YouTube and on Amazon Fire TV. You can find that as well. Again, that's April 17th, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Get in there, check it out. We will be uh, participating as well. It's all of our experts making the picks for your team and every single one in the league. This is going to be somebody that might be in a conversation. I don't know that it's going to necessarily pay off, but another visit to Kansas City is Jonathan Brooks. Chiefs Kingdom would revolt if it's in the conversation of first round, considering, uh, think about where where we were the last time they picked 32 and what they did at 32. Yeah. Uh, who and they just brought him back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, the, so, so you, so that's not going to leave the collective memory of chief's kingdom. I guarantee you that, but Jonathan Brooks, the Texas running back who's been injured, but is maybe the most natural runner in this draft class was in Kansas city for a visit. Now the injury is definitely something that has knocked him down boards he has come out still as our overall at Rogue Analytics, our number one running back on our draft guide, due to his film grade, which is clearly, especially with running backs, the most important thing that you can take away. But his production was skyrocketed there. He wasn't able to test. So he got a hit for the athletic matrix because he wasn't in a, a, a position to do that. What this has me feeling is like, I, I think they learned their lesson from Clyde. I don't think a first round running backs in, in in the discussion. I'm not even sure if a second round running backs in the discussion. But with his injury, I feel like maybe they feel his stock will be depressed and he could be there third, fourth, et cetera, et cetera, where they probably feel more comfortable taking a running back at this point. Do you think that's what's behind it, or is this just due diligence? I don't think it's that either. I think it's smoke. Hmm. I think that they're looking at this situation just trying to give people no idea where they're gonna go. And the reality is it's what you have to do in this situation. I mean, Kansas City, we've talked about this the entire offseason. They're in a position where it's going to be very hard to trade up. Teams are not going to want to move around with Kansas City when they're trading, when they're trying to trade up. Now, if a team desperately wants to move back, maybe they will be willing to do it. But that's going to be a little bit of a different situation. I mean, Kansas City's in, a, in the boat where even trading back, they may have trouble. I mean, teams are just not going to want to trade with them. They're not going to want to make it easy on them. So to me, this is – you can't have anybody having a real idea of the guys you're interested in. And how many times have we heard that, you know, the chiefs never even had a visit with somebody that they drafted in the first three rounds. I mean, that happens. Uh, I mean, they could have talked to him, you know, at the, at the pro day for a couple of minutes or they could have talked to him at, you know, the combine for a couple of minutes and it was never thought of to be anything. And then all of a sudden they're drafting the guy. Uh, they are very good at hiding their true intentions. So to me, this screams more, smoke than mirror or than than fire but we'll see it certainly could be it and it also has to give you an idea of what the top end of the position group is widely considered to be one of the very top uh trey benson is another um do like his his style not the athlete maybe that you had hoped for it, when it came to testing and the production was obviously a little bit low he's our number two grade over at rogue analytics you can get the draft guide it's all in there uh, he's our number two running back on film. So if those guys are at the top and you're able to gauge what their value is, especially in your system, gives you an idea down the pecking order when you come to the fifth round or the sixth round or or maybe even UDFAs, how you get your fit and what you should be willing or may have to spend in order to solicit and, and secure those picks that are the fits for this team. Yeah. yeah. I just <laughs> – a running back going before the fourth round for the Chiefs just doesn't make sense to me in this draft. Uh, but, you know, I did a I did a mock draft today, and I think I doubled up a wide receiver again you know, on the mock draft today. And nice. it, it's hard because you're sitting there in a situation where, in, in my mock draft, I'll just tell you, Brian Thomas was still on the board at 32. To me, if that happens, Chiefs run to the board, the podium and take him. 
like that's not a there's no question you're not taking any kind of trade offers you're just going to go take the guy uh but but the reality is is that when you go look at how these drafts are playing out and i know that it's all mock drafts and you know teams are going to have it differently i get all that but when you go look at how these mock drafts are playing out the the positions that the chiefs need players and want to get players at are going to be highly overpicked even though there's a ton of talent so it's going to make it even harder for them to get somebody. Yeah, and that's going to feed into our discussion about the wide receiver position coming up here later. But the running back group itself, I think, is something that the success of Isaiah Pacheco is certainly slanted, uh, not yep. just this fan base, but I think the NFL a little bit back towards where we were a couple of years ago in that the value at running back is in volume not in a single instance of a player. And so I, I do believe that they could take a couple of bites at the Apple at wide receiver. They could certainly do it at running back as well. But those bites are going to come way, way farther down the road at the sixth, yep. at the seventh round level, and at the UDFA level. And so I think having a visit in for a running back, I, I see the point about smoke for sure. Uh, and I'm just a little bit surprised that this is the player. So if it were to be the case, where's the first eruption in Kansas city? Should a running back come off the board in the first two days? <laughs> I don't know, but it's going to be horrible. I mean, she's Twitter can be bad enough. Even when <laughs> things are going good. So, and, and the reality of, of Twitter in general and or X or whatever you want to call it, the reality of everybody being on there and that being the community of where you're talking about and, and you're seeing things and YouTube can be that place as well is everybody has their own prospects that they like. So, you know, you can say this guy is a consensus, you know, number one, number two, number three, wide receiver in the class, whatever. Nobody, not everybody's going to agree with you. So, I mean, that's the beauty of this draft, and that's where you're going to get all the conversation is, you know, 2020 is always, when you're looking back on a draft later, 2020 vision is easy, but, uh, you know, having a pretty good feel for how the draft is going and how the teams are going to be doing things and, all that that's really what's what they're trying to figure out right now is they're running scenarios trying to figure out who they think could be there in, at 32 who could be yeah. on their short list because i'm guessing that their list is probably uh maybe they have 15 or 20 prospects that that they would be okay with taking there but they're thinking that maybe only three or four maybe even five are going to be available or have a chance to be available and that's that's the biggest question and it's it's investment versus what you're going to get in return. And that's the bigger question as well at another position, one that is becoming quickly uh, here as we move forward, more and more premium. That's the wide receivers. Coming up next, we're going to get to what does the future look like at the position as a group, not just a, as individual players for this franchise as they move forward towards a repeat and behind, beyond. With last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest guaranteed price, Game Time takes the guesswork out of getting tickets for MLB. Right now, summer's coming. You might as well get in on the action. And right down to the last minute, the deals that you want, you can save up to 60% by buying last minute for sports, concerts, theater, comedy, anything. You can get zone deals to give you an area of the venue that you're looking for to pick your seat and get that last minute game time kind of discount take the guesswork out of buying those tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use our code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off of your first purchase terms apply you just got to create the account and redeem the code that's locked on nfl all one word to get 20 dollars off download that game time app today last minute tickets lowest prices and they are guaranteed Make sure you check out the Locked On Sports Today feed. It's 24-7 here on YouTube and on Amazon Fire TV. You can find us anytime you like all day long. I'm really intrigued by the phenomenon that is the wide receiver group. And it's across the league. Something very strange happened recently in Philadelphia. It caught me by surprise. Do you want to tell the people exactly what that is and just how crazy it is? I... Crazy doesn't even begin to describe what's going on in Philadelphia right now to me because Devontae Smith may be a very good wide receiver, but $25 million a year for the three years after his fifth-year option is asinine. 
I'll, I'll just put it that way. It's asinine. It's stupid. I don't think that he deserves to be paid that, and you're going to be paying two guys that kind of money. Uh, that's the real issue that you're going to be dealing with there. And the other reality is, is we don't really know the numbers right now. Like we're being told that that's what the numbers are. Three years, $75 million. I mean, it could end up being, you know, really that's the maximum he can, he can make. And that would be a better deal for the, the Eagles. But the reality is, and this is what I talked about on Twitter a little bit earlier today is that I guarantee you, they probably got two or three or four void years in this deal. And that's the problem that Philadelphia is going to be facing. Go look at Jalen Hurts' contract. He's got, I don't remember how many void years, five, six. I mean, just mm. something stupid. Uh, so they can keep moving their roster bonuses back and back and back. And like you keep doing that stuff. I mean, yeah, New Orleans is able to get away with it right now, but eventually you're going to have to, the, you're going to, have to pay the bill and it's yeah. going to come due. And in a season where I would think, because not only did they just pay Deon, Devon, sorry, Devontae Smith this money, they also just paid Jordan Maialata. And I'm not saying he's not a good tackle, but they just paid him a boatload of money too. Mm-hmm. And didn't they also just pay one of their guards? Um, no, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, but they just paid one of their guards as well. I, I, so money is growing on trees in Philadelphia. And <laughs> congratulations to them. But to me, this is a scenario where I think they're poised to take a step back. I mean, I think that lo- the loss of Jason Kelsey on the offensive line is going to be much deeper than a lot of people want to say. I happen to agree with you there. It, it just brings me back to the value. $25 million a season for Devontae Smith. Same for A.J. Brown. You're trying to tell me that Devontae Smith is – 83% of Tyreek Hill at 30 mil a season. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to tell me on average? Is he 85% of Devonta Adams? I, I can't see either of those equations working out and making sense. Well, and that is what I think affects the chiefs the most is what the market is doing. The whole across the, the girth of the league is it's changing this landscape in a way that I think is going to change the future of the Kansas city organization. So let's be clear on this. If we go look, Jalen Hurts has a $31 million cap number in 2026. I'm going to 2026 because Devontae Smith still has his fifth-year option next year in 25. Mm. So $31 million for Jalen Hurts, $41 million for A.J. Brown, $26 million for Jordan Maialata, $23 million, 20, almost $24 million for Dallas Goddard. And that doesn't even include... That's all trap. Devonte Smith, and that's, that's in 2026. Uh, oh, and Lane Johnson's at 19 million. I can't I, fault Lane Johnson. I don't fault. Well, I know I don't fault the players for any of this. Uh, Darius Slay is at 24 million, and he's on a void year that year, so that that's probably not going to be there. So is Jordan Wyalata, and technically speaking, Jason Kelsey is still on their uh, salary cap in 2026 because of all the void years. That's how those work. That's why you're dealing with some of the stuff that they're dealing with in New Orleans, and it's going to be a huge deal for this team. It is. It's but it's going to be a huge deal for the NFL as well. Yeah. And that's how it's going to get to Kansas City as well because right now all these contracts continuing to go up. They moved Tyreek Hill because they didn't want to pay him that. Against these numbers, he's absolutely worth that number. So that you can't argue I about value. Him. <laughs> no, I, I I agree. I'm just not saying like you could see that from here, right? And so yeah. what does that tell you about the future? It's not just the guard market that is making things difficult. It's this wide receiver. It started with Christian Kirk and the surprise there and everything that's happened since is continue to make it that right now we are seeing the trend change in Kansas City. Yes, we know they need a wide receiver to pair with Rasheed Rice, especially after Rasheed Rice is off the field problems and everything else. We know that that was going to be a goal this season. I hate to tell you, folks, it's going to be a goal every season. You're going to draft a top 100 wide receiver every single year going forward because you can't afford to have two of these guys hit. Half the time you can't afford one if you're going to pay Mahomes and Kels and Jones and who knows with Nick Bolton and Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith. Well, 
I hate saying this, but Kelsey's probably going to be gone in, in 26 or 27. So, See, I mean, you could have just walked past it. It could have been fine. I, yeah, I know. But at the same time, you have to address it because it's if that's reality, then it's reality. And, and you're going to have to deal with it in the future. So, to me, I think Kelsey will, will take care of himself at 26 or 27. But the bigger issue that you're running into is you have a guy like Devontae Smith getting $25 million this year. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, yeah. C.D. Lamb. All those guys are getting ready to get paid this year. And I guarantee you at least two of those guys are going to be over Tyree Kill. Yeah. And I wouldn't be shocked if C.D. Lamb is too. Yeah, you have, You're have preaching to the choir here. And what it tells me that at this time of the year, we are 10 days from the draft. It tells me more and more and more is that this is going to be a constantly revolving door at the wide receiver position in Kansas City. Maybe at a lot of teams in the league. Maybe not all of them, but certainly in Kansas City. And it makes you wonder if Kansas City, and I hate saying it this way because it might feel like that, but this is a very deep wide receiver draft. So it makes me wonder is can Kansas City maybe look at this and say, you know, maybe trading away an extra third or a second round pick next year or second round pick this year to move up and go get a wide receiver that we want this year is going to be worth it because if you get him in the first round, you get a fifth year option that keeps the cost down. And at 32, or even if you're trading up to, you know, 21, 22, 23, wherever, that's still a cheaper fifth year option than paying 20, $25 million to, you know, average wide receivers. I'm not calling Devontae Smith average, but Christian Kirk got close to $20 million and he didn't deserve it. Sorry. It's reality. Hey, I'll pitch in. I only catered one hundred person dinner from Jack Stack. If I can get Roman Dunze on this offense, <sighs> don't even, dude. If you get Roman, yeah, you're, you're not getting him unless you're get, getting rid of a first round pick in 2025. Which yeah. I don't. Don't know. say it. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, I'm just. I mean, I would consider doing that for left tackle. I, I and and really. With the way that the pay ranges are going for wide receiver, maybe if you think that he is, you have to feel like he is going to be your cornerstone and you're going to build the offense around him and Mahomes. Whoever you would be trading two first round picks for, that's what you got to feel like they are. They're going to be that cornerstone guy that are going to be their glue, the glue guy for the next five years. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a half. There's no way around it. What is the future like in in your eyes? Do you see the same thing for the wide receivers and, and maybe even the running backs? How do you like the concept of Tavondre Sweat in Kansas City? We'd like to know. Leave your comments down below, and we would love to hear from you. Make sure that you like, sub, and hit this bell here so you have everything. We are going to have daily breakdowns during the draft of everything that happens for Kansas City as well as all the coverage. Make sure you get the draft guide and the athletic majors at rogapc.com. Make sure you see every single mock draft at Chiefs Corner right now because there's a ton of ways that this could fall down. And I also will be doing uh, what I did last year. I will be writing the articles and giving insight into the players, probably giving maybe we'll see if, if Ryan will let me use his uh, matrix to show off the players a little bit and uh, also yeah, talk but- about their contracts that they're going to be signing because we'll have those numbers as soon as they're drafted. That's going to be the nice part. We're going to have all the information for all the draft needs. Make sure you like, sub, and hit the bell here. Get on Spotify. Get on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate you spending your day with us. We're going to be back tomorrow with Matt Derrick. Later in the week, we get closer and we look at prospects specifically as they continue to come in for 30 visits. Thanks for spending your time with us today.